So when the first cryptocurrency ever, Bitcoin, appeared, nobody knew how big it would become. I mean, the first Bitcoin purchase was two pizzas. But it was supposed to be big, right? That was the story. But more than a decade later, Bitcoin is far from being on top. So what happened? Let's start at the beginning. 2007, Japan. A mysterious man named Satoshi Nakamoto begins work on a new bold idea, a concept of cyber money, currency, existing only in cyberspace. In August of the next year, three men file an application for an encryption patent application. Surprisingly, all of them say they have no idea who Nakamoto is, which begins a rumor that it might be just a pseudonym for a whole group of people. Then on August 18, 2008, Bitcoin.org was anonymously registered. Two months later, Nakamoto published a white paper called Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system, explaining the whole concept behind Bitcoin. However, the system officially started to work only in 2009, when the creators mined the first-ever Bitcoin block called Genesis Block. Of course, Nakamoto made the first Bitcoin transaction sending 10 bitcoins to a computer developer. In October 2009, a bitcoin exchange rate was finally revealed. One bitcoin equaled three thousandths of a dollar. Mm, not very much, huh? Now it was time for bitcoin transactions, and the first one was made in May of 2010. A programmer from Florida sent 10,000 bitcoins, which was about $25, to buy two pizzas. If he only knew that a couple of years later, these bitcoins would be worth roughly 39 million bucks. That's a lifetime supply of pizza right there. By the beginning of 2011, one bitcoin was finally worth one dollar. With all the buzz around it, four months later, it was 31 dollars against one bitcoin. However, it didn't last that long. Just four days after this peak, the value of Bitcoin decreased back to $10 due to security issues. Still, this didn't stop Bitcoin from appearing to conquer the world, with more services accepting Bitcoins and new apps coming. In April of 2013, it hit the new height of $266. A couple of hiccups here and there, and in November, one Bitcoin went up to $1,242. 2017 was a golden year for Bitcoin. In summer, its price increased to $3,000. In September, it got up to $5,000. And by the beginning of 2018, it went all the way up to mind-blowing $13,000. But soon, everything went downhill. If your 2018 was bad, Bitcoin can compete with that. Everything was against it. China ramped up their cryptocurrency sanctions, while Facebook, Twitter, and Google decided to ban cryptocurrency ads. As a result, Bitcoin plummeted back to $3,000. These days, the situation is a bit better, though. You can get one Bitcoin for roughly $3,900. Still, why did the most popular cryptocurrency in the world suddenly collapse? Well, there are a couple of factors that contributed to it. Bitcoins depend on a system of people called miners that verify all the Bitcoin transactions. However, these miners get paid their own portion of Bitcoins for their service as well, and these expenses are getting bigger every day. This process hurts not only Bitcoin, but some miners too. They generate less profit and close. And this circle seems to be never-ending. Some countries aren't fans of cryptocurrency as well, including the US. In 2018, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission made it clear that the operators of two initial coin offerings must pay fines and restitution because they broke the law by selling unlicensed securities. And, as you might guess, this doesn't make investors any more excited about buying Bitcoin. Analysts also have another theory about Bitcoin's fall, the division within the cryptocurrency community. You see, Bitcoin can only process a certain number of transactions per second. Per second. And not everybody is happy about it. 
In 2017, a faction of the cryptocurrency community developed Bitcoin Cash, an alternative version of Bitcoin. And, naturally, numerous investors chose Bitcoin Cash, which allows them to make transactions way faster and improve their work. It got so popular that today, one Bitcoin Cash values around $158. Just imagine how many investors original Bitcoin lost. So yeah, there are many theories on why Bitcoin keeps on falling, but no definite answers. And it's not surprising, it's a very confusing thing. It's far from being stable now, so you basically buy a lottery ticket when you decide to invest in it, and your lottery odds might be better. Of course, with the fall of Bitcoin, other cryptocurrencies started to become more and more popular. Today, anyone who wants to get into cryptocurrency has plenty of options to choose from. Like NEO. NEO was originally called AntShares and was developed in 2014 by Da Hongfrei. This is the largest cryptocurrency coming from China, which got people talking since China doesn't approve the whole idea of the cryptocurrency market. NEO reached its all-time peak back in 2017, when it valued about $162. Today, however, it equals only a bit over $9 for one token. Monero This is an open-source cryptocurrency that first came to market in 2014. It's highly private and leaves no trace whatsoever. And that's why it has so many dedicated fans that donate their money for its further development. However, there is a dark side to this cryptocurrency as well, as its exceptional security measures allow buyers to use it for bad purposes. Developers try to make the situation better though, and nowadays one Monero equals a bit over $54. Litecoin so Litecoin was created back in 2011 by a former Google engineer, Charlie Lee. It's one of the first cryptocurrencies launched, and is even called a silver to Bitcoin's gold. In some ways, Litecoin is better. It's based on an open-source global payment network, and has a much faster block generation rate and transaction confirmation. Whatever the heck that means. Right now, one Litecoin is worth almost $59 and developers continue to do everything they can to make it even more popular and accepted. Dash Dash, or as it is often called, Darkcoin, was developed in 2014 by Evan Duffield. It's basically a more private version of popular Bitcoin. When you use Dash, your transactions are almost impossible to trace. So you don't have to worry about your anonymity. And this factor attracts numerous users who choose this cryptocurrency all around the world. At the moment, the value of Dash is around $90, though. Ethereum Ethereum is a whole platform run on its own unique token called Ether. The pre-sales for Ethers was launched in 2014, and the platform itself started working in 2015. According to the platform description, you can use Ether to trade, secure, and codify almost anything. In 2016, Ethereum split into Ethereum and Ethereum Classic. Wow, just two years and you become a classic? Now, everyone who's interested in this platform can get one Ether for roughly $137. But even with all these different cryptocurrencies around, the market is still not very stable. So, can cryptocurrency actually survive the crisis and become the basis of our future economy? Nobody knows for sure. Bitcoin advocates say that the number of things you can buy with cryptocurrency grows faster and faster. Of course, it's still not enough to become very common, and the small supply and uneven distribution of cryptocurrency shows that this is still a thing for a small group of interested people. Government regulations of cryptocurrency are also highly important. The more countries accept it, the more comfortable cryptocurrency investors feel. And more and more countries are starting to look into it. However, one thing still remains a huge concern – security. Even though some cryptocurrencies, like Monero, have high security standards, 
others can be pretty vulnerable against any type of cyber attacks. Bitcoin, for instance, was already hacked several times, adding to investors' jitters. And all these times were followed by the serious decrease of its value. So, security is certainly one of the main problems the cryptocurrency market has to solve for Bitcoin to survive and prosper. So, the future of the cryptocurrency market appears to be pretty vague. There are some predictions, though. Specialists say that Bitcoins can lay a great foundation for countries with a weak national currency, especially considering the fact that nobody has direct control over their price. Others are sure that cryptocurrency is going to fail because of its instability. But some people still believe in a happy future for Bitcoin. For example, Tim Draper, billionaire investor, who gave a bold prediction that one Bitcoin will achieve the value of $250,000 by 2022. On the other hand, someone once said, economics exists to make astrology more respectable. Which means simply, who knows? Finally, if you find all this terribly confusing, I leave you with this sage advice from billionaire investor Warren Buffett. Never invest in a business you cannot understand. If you really don't grasp this stuff, and most people don't, even though they convince themselves that they do, most times it's a smarter play just to put your money back in your pocket and walk away. So what do you think about cryptocurrency? Is it the future or just a passing fad? Sound off in the comments below. Don't forget to give this video a like, share it with your friends, and click subscribe. Always stay on the bright side.